Welcome to Liftoff, your first place where you'll find everything space and often SpaceX. In a series of new job postings, SpaceX has hinted at an unexpected desire to develop marine recovery systems for the Starship program. Since SpaceX first began bending metal for its steel Starship development program in late 2018, CEO Elon Musk, executives, and the company itself have long maintained that both Super Heavy Boosters and Starship Upper Stages would perform what is known as Return to Launch Site, RTLS, landings. It's no longer clear if those long-stated plans are set in stone. Oddly, despite repeatedly revealing plans to develop marine recovery assets for Starship, SpaceX's recent marine engineer and naval architect job postings never specifically mention the company's well-established plans to convert retired oil rigs into vast floating Starship launch sites. Weighing several thousand tons and absolutely dwarfing the football field-sized drone ships SpaceX recovers Falcon boosters with, it goes without saying that towing an entire oil rig hundreds of miles to and from port is not an efficient or economical solution for rocket recovery. It would also make very little sense for SpaceX to hire a dedicated naval architect without once mentioning that they'd be working on something as all-encompassing as the world's largest floating launch pad. That leaves three obvious explanations for the mentions. First, it might be possible that SpaceX is merely preparing for the potential recovery of debris or intact floating ships or boosters after intentionally expending them on early orbital Starship test flights. Second, SpaceX might have plans to strip an oil rig or two without fully converting them into launch pads and then use those rigs as landing platforms designed to remain at sea indefinitely. Those platforms might then transfer landed ships or boosters to smaller support ships tasked with returning them to dry land. Third, and arguably most likely, SpaceX might be exploring the possible benefits of landing super-heavy boosters at sea. Rather than coasting 500 to 1,000 kilometers, 300 to 600 plus miles downrange after stage separation and landing on a drone ship at sea, those 24 boosters flipped around, canceled out their substantial velocities, and boosted themselves a few hundred kilometers back to the Florida or California coast, where they finally touched down on basic concrete pads. Unsurprisingly, canceling out about 1.5 kilometers per second of downrange velocity, equivalent to Mach 4.5, and fully reversing that velocity back towards the launch site is an expensive maneuver, costing quite a lot of propellant. For example, the nominal 25-second re-entry burn performed by almost all Falcon boosters likely costs about 20 tons 40, pounds, of propellant. The average 35-second single-engine landing burn used by all Falcon boosters likely costs about 10 tons, 22,000 pounds of propellant. Normally, that's all that's needed for a drone ship booster landing. For RTLS landings, Falcon boosters must also perform a large 40-second boost-back burn with three Merlin 1D engines, likely costing an extra 25 to 35 tons, 55,000 to 80,000 pounds of propellant. In other words, an RTLS landing generally ends up costing at least twice as much propellant as a drone ship landing. Using the general rocketry rule of thumb that every 7 kilograms of booster mass reduces payload to orbit by 1 kilogram, and assuming that each reusable Falcon booster requires about 3 tons of recovery-specific hardware, mostly legs and grid fins, a drone ship landing might reduce Falcon 9's payload to low Earth orbit, LEO, by 5 tons, from 22 tons to 17 tons. The extra propellant needed for an RTLS landing might reduce it by another 4 to 5 tons to 13 tons. Likely, less than coincidentally, a Falcon 9 with drone ship booster recovery has never launched more than 16 tons to LEO. While SpaceX hasn't provided NASA's LPERV calculator with data for orbits lower than 400 kilometers, 250 miles, it generally agrees in indicating that Falcon 9 is capable of launching about 12 tons with an RTLS landing and 16 tons with a drone ship landing. 
This is all to say that landing reusable boosters at sea will likely always be substantially more efficient. The reason that SpaceX has always held that Starship's Super Heavy boosters will avoid maritime recovery is that landing and recovering giant rocket boosters at sea is inherently difficult, risky, time-consuming, and expensive. That makes rapid reuse, on the order of multiple times per day or week, almost impossible and inevitably adds to the cost of recovery, which could actually be quite significant for a rocket that SpaceX wants to eventually cost just a few million dollars per launch. However, so long as at-sea recovery costs less than a few million dollars, there's always a chance that certain launch profiles could be drastically simplified and end up cheaper by the occasional at-sea booster landing. If the alternative is a second dedicated launch to partially refuel one Starship, it's possible that a sea landing could give Starship the performance needed to accomplish the same mission in a single launch, lowering the total cost of launch services. At the end of the day, just 100 tons to LEO may be more than enough to satisfy any realistic near-term performance requirements. But until Starship and Super Heavy boosters are reusable enough to routinely launch multiple times per week, let alone per day, and marginal launch costs have been slashed to single-digit millions of dollars, it's hard to imagine SpaceX willingly leaving so much performance on the table by foregoing at-sea recovery out of principle alone. SpaceX's Starship launch vehicle has many potential uses and capabilities that will enable companies and organizations to access space like never before. Engineers are developing the fully reusable Starship launch system at the Starbase facility located in Boca Chica Beach, Texas. Reusability enables SpaceX to reduce the cost of spaceflight and enable a sustainable human presence in space long term. The company has already performed multiple test flights with Starship prototypes. They are now getting ready to conduct the first full-scale orbital flight test with a Super Heavy rocket. Super Heavy is designed to propel Starship to orbit, powered by up to 29 methane-fueled Raptor engines. It is said to become the world's most powerful and largest rocket in history. Starship will be a versatile launch vehicle that will revolutionize space exploration. Some of SpaceX's plans for Starship and potential include transporting massive amounts of payload to space. The 160-foot-tall stainless steel spacecraft will be capable of launching over 100 tons of cargo to orbit, enabling companies to launch entire constellations of satellites in a single mission. These satellite constellations take years to complete with the rockets that are currently in operation. And that concludes today's episode. I hope you enjoyed the video. If so, show me your support by clicking on the like button. Also, subscribe to Liftoff Channel and SpaceX and turn on notifications to see more upcoming videos about great space, Elon Musk, and SpaceX. Thank you for watching and see you next time.